Today on The Breakfast, as the effects of the Naira crunch bites harder, socio-economic rights and accountability project, Sarap has filed a suit against President Mohamed Buhari over the unlawful directives banning the use of old 500 and 1,000 Naira notes, contrary to the interim injunction guaranteed by the Supreme Court. Also on the breakfast, in the wake of all economic crises, farmers in the country have scored the administration of President Mohamedou Buhari low in tackling the nation's current food crisis. What do we have in our hands? We'll also be reviewing all of the biggest stories on the front pages of the national dailies in the country. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Monday morning. I am Messi Ibopo. Trust you had a wonderful weekend. We're reaching you live from our studios right here in Victoria Island, Lagos. And uh, usually we start our conversation with top trending. But just to remind you that it's a power week. That's what I call it. Because this is the weekend where Nigerians will, you know, head to the polls to cast their vote. And of course, elect who becomes your president on the 25th of February. So... Uh, fingers are crossed and we'll be bringing you all of the coverage and reportage that you need uh, on this channel, 408 and DSTV. Uh, but we head straight to, you know, talking about what's happening and what Nigerians have been talking about. Now, number one is that, uh, you know, Zainab Kasima, her former special assistant to the president in the office of the first lady, has sued the president's wife, Aisha Bohari, demanding 100 million naira as damage from her and other respondent. Uh, Zainab filed a suit for enforcement of her fundamental right against Aisha Buhari. Other respondents in the case include the Inspector General of Police and Department of State Services. Zainab claimed that uh, some Department of State Service officers, that's DSS, acting on the orders of Aisha Buhari, abducted her purportedly and took her to the presidential villa where she was, you know, severely assaulted and dehumanized and abused. And Nigerians have taken to different social media uh, points, especially Twitter, to react about that. And they say that, hey, Asha Buhari is not different from Buhari. I mean, it just shows you the level of uh, disregard for fundamental human rights and what have you. But, uh, you know, it's been sued. It's in, in court, or apparently. Uh, there's a suitcase to that regard. I will just cross the fingers and see how all of that pans out. But like I always want to say, that you are a human being before you're anything. Whether you're so before you begin to give yourself the tags or before you are associated with everything, you're first a human being, and that's important. And as a human being, it's important that you act as a human being, respect for one another, human life uh, or lives. You want to say, uh, you know, treat people as they should be treated, not like animals. I even think that animals are treated better, better than the way we treat humans for whatever reason. But this is not, you know, very commendable, especially with those who are highly placed. Uh, we're yet to see how all of that pans out, especially now that, you know, that has been uh, taken to the court. But we move away from that. Another the top trending is that following the you know, the non-availability of the Naira, the cashless policy that was introduced by the Central Bank of Nigeria, which has been in full force. It has triggered a sequence in cash circulation and leaving traders and buyers in some parts of the country. Uh, for instance, in Lagos, West, uh, you know, they were stranded with many of them now resorting to traditional sale as a means of survival. Trade by butter. <laughs> Well, this pattern involves that you have an exchange of goods or services between traders and farmers without cash payment. And so that has become like a means uh, fooling all of the uh, lingering cash shortage that appear to have taken a very firm route with the central bank insisting that the owners notes of the 500, 1,000 are long, longer a legal instrument in the country. Uh, I'd like to leave it at that and not also uh, to you know, look at the presidential speech. 
the presidential uh, address at the time where he talked about the fact that just 200 naira note is very valid right now as we speak. I mean, 200 naira note is what can be used. So if you still have 200 naira, that's uh, the only note that can be used in the means of exchange or exchanging uh, in the course of transaction, however you want to put it right there. But 500 and 1,000 is no longer a legal tender in Nigeria. And I remember having this conversation with my, uh, with a, f you know, someone very close to me. And he had suggested that as a means of survival, because if you look at this policy, it would probably hit those who are at the grassroots. And so we, people would have to find a means of survival and resorting to that. And I'm quite surprised that this has been the case. There's also another video. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that we have what it takes uh, we have this video. If we do have it, I'd like that we roll it immediately. Uh, There's a video that made also uh, the round over the weekend as to a young man who went to buy rice. So he had a detergent. Apparently, he owns a shop. So he took his detergent to the lady who sells food. And the detergent was worth 300 naira. So he wanted food worth 300 naira. So he used the detergent in exchange for the food for 300 naira, and that was rice. I'm just saying that this is what it is. But I'd like to bring to your notice that there's a market which is located in a remote village in Esokumba in Akpabuyo. That's in Cross River State. It's a weekly market that starts from 7 a.m. and ends at noon every Saturday. Now, what happens in this market is that people come to the market, they trade by butter. So people bring their goods and exchange for another one. So for instance, I have yam and I want beans. So all I do is I just take my yam to the market and someone who wants my yam would bring what I want and we exchange or however it is. Whether it's fish, that market exists. Despite, now, this is not because of the, uh, you know, the cashless policy, but this market has been in existence. I mean, it still exists even as when we have, you know, the Naira as a means of uh, buying and selling. Uh, but... Most importantly is that we have to find a way to survive. And so we have seen reports, we have heard of stories where people are taking to the street to destroy the banks and cause mayhem, and, you know, riot and become very destructive and are not peaceful. That does not solve the problem. You want money, you don't have money. It's a means of survival. I mean, we have to find a way to survive. That's what it is. And it's very commendable that, you know, uh, some people are finding a way, traders and people are just finding a way to survive, which is within uh, the legal jurisdiction or still very civil. And that's what we say, that there's a means of exchange. You still have the transfer. It is something that a lot of people have not, you know, accepted. Uh, as a means of payment for services and using the POS, uh, swiping your cards and what have you, we should be able to embrace these means and uh, patterns of payment in order to survive. As much as we call on the government in a very, very civil manner, you know, to act swiftly. Yes, that's what it is. So um, rather than take to the streets and begin to become very destructive, destroying the banks, uh, blocking the roads, and causing traffic, and just, you know, becoming irrational. We would rather just find ways and means to survive. So we ask and urge that let's also accept all the means of transaction. Let's also accept all the means where we can make payments without being uh, uncivil. That's the request right here. We take a break, and when we return, it'll be time for us to go through the front pages of our national dailies. We'll call it Off the Press. Please stay with us. Good morning.